Welcome guys, back with another late night tutorial. I'm actually going to wrap up this barrel. I'm not going to waste any time here, so let's jump right in. Uh, this is the base object for that barrel that I created in the original high poly video. So I'm just going to recycle it and put my low poly material on it. I'm going to align it. And you can kind of see where it's not matching the curve. And in fact, if I isolate it, you can see that this barrel even has some faceting on the edges that I'm not really a fan of. So I'd like to address some of that. Maybe start with a... Uh, let's actually adjust the... I'm going to do a push on this barrel first. Get it to a more uh, acceptable place placement on the high poly. So I think I want it something closer closer to here. Yeah. And then uh, it's not lining up with the plank so I think I'm gonna turn yeah five degrees. It looks like my barrel was five degrees off on that rotation. So I just turned it five degrees to match those edges with sort of the seams in between the planks and so uh, I think that'll make it better <laughs> it's looking like oh yeah let me actually collapse that push modifier in convertible poly uh, for the most part it looks like my this base barrel is uh, pretty fit to that high poly aside from a couple of areas and, oops. I do want to do some things to adjust that Transform type in, you can right click on your transform tool, whether that's move, rotate, or scale. Don't know how many videos I'm going to repeat that in, but. Let's turn edge constraints off. Scale that out a little bit, and then I think I'm going to chamfer that edge. Just I'm just working on making sure that this all aligns up. sure exactly how many edges tall I want this barrel um, but I'm kind of I'm kind of gonna start with that center edge and just work my way out if I use edge uh, constraints here I can slide along the curve that kind of pre-exists and so you'll see me kind of, I'm using hotkey, but I tend to flip back and you can see the screen, my uh, constraint button here light up as well. But uh, I'll turn it off. I'll just kind of slide things around until it fits.
scale this top face up. Oh, remember to turn edge constraints off. How many sides around is this? Yeah, 32 really should be plenty. Uh, this last edge at the top, I'm, uh, I'm, so what I'm planning here is to bake these rings down. I don't want to create any extra geometry for these rings. So uh, here, I'm, I'm kind of going to leave, hmm, kind of going to leave the low poly underneath the high poly, and I'm going to use the projection cage when I bake my normals push that out and capture these bands and I might have to push it out kind of far I think that'll be okay uh, but it might be good to uh, maybe this one little might be good to kind of capture that just a little bit better or a little bit closer so I'm really trying to find a happy medium between the low poly and the bands since they're kind of my outermost point on that high poly and so on this top edge, or this top face, what I was saying is that I think I just want to make sure that that very outermost edge here is capturing that band. We'll probably need another edge loop here, maybe, or maybe an inset on the... Maybe an inset on that face. Feeling like that's pretty good. And I wish that isolate would hold still. Maybe this edge could be adjusted a little bit. So I think that that top portion is matching pretty well, and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that over. I think I didn't touch that center edge, so it should mirror just fine. <laughs> Symmetry is just fine. Well, except for that. Let's do it on the z-axis. Yeah. So there's that barrel, I think it's looking pretty uh, tight as far as the low poly to the high poly goes. Let's uh, collapse that in, that symmetry modifier. Well, maybe we can keep it for the next moment or two while I work on this. And set that top. Set it again, I might just move it down. X-ray mode here.
trying to figure out how I want to capture that inside edge. I want to bet that that normal map is going to catch this little groove in here really well. Uh, 45, uh, 45 degree cuts tend to catch little uh, kind of concave, concave uh, areas on the mesh like that. And so, I mean, there, this polygon's normal is almost pointing directly at we check that see that that the normal for that is almost pointing directly at this little groove in here so I'd be willing to bet that that uh, normal map will catch that just fine make it fairly convincing Could do it like that too. Personally, I think this will do. We'll run with that. Inset one more. No, maybe not inset. Uh, well, well, well. Let me just delete the face altogether. Select this inside border. I'm just going to give it a clean quad cap. So I did a shift drag on the border. Oh, let's try it the other way. I think it's because my barrel is rotated five degrees. <laughs> it's okay. We'll just do a, a little bit larger of a weld threshold on it. Like that. Check. Go back to my edge and remove it. Second guessing myself uh, on this. Not that it would catch well, just uh, I've been trying to move out of sort of last generation techniques uh, so that I don't have to make another barrel here in the next five years. <laughs> I'll get tired of making barrels. Uh, this barrel will probably need to be remade in the next five years or so. Look at that faceting. kind of weird that my edges are running opposite direction of the planks in the case of this lid but maybe maybe that's okay maybe not eh. yeah I actually like that I'll leave it that way Really, if I was concerned with that, I probably could just rotate. Like that. Okay. This guy, I want to make a low poly for. Good thing I kept my modifier stack intact. I think I can just remove that edit poly modifier. This thing is probably way too dense in terms of geometry. The size is 32 sides. If I do every other one, do a dot loop, no, sorry, dot ring, I mean. Remove every other one.
I think I feel pretty good about that. Maybe I'd want a little chamfer on this. I'll undo that. Apply my low poly material. Align it back. Chamfer. Get rid of these bottom faces that you'll never see in the low poly. Get rid of excess spillover. Just like that vertice. Turn off edge constraints so I can scale this face out a little bit more. And I'm not really a fan of that point. Which way are my edges going again? That way. Let's do the same for this. Oh. And I'm just going to do a connect vertex for each one of these. If you don't have a hotkey, the hotkey for repeat last command is a semicolon by default. So you can hit the connect vertex button and then uh, and then go and highlight and hit uh, semicolon and it would repeat whatever your last tool was so you can connect those real fast let's do a little push on that I keep going back to this modifier list where's my push tool do, 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 do. it's been a little bit been out of max let's see push Where's JJ's push tool? Well, that's annoying. Not fully set up. Anyways, fine, I'll go back to the modifier menu. Now's not the time. Push. be an okay time to collapse and it's got a clear smoothing groups put it all in one and then lastly I might probably take these top faces do a select by angle Collect all those. We're in here too. Put these on their own smoothing group. So you see, we got that shadow down at the bottom. Our bent normals. Clear that. Put it on two. Clean that up a little bit. And really, I would call that low poly pretty much done. I mean, maybe if we were to go in and kind of clean up, we could check on a. Uh, we could check on our triangles, which are a little whack. Might uh, jump over to an editable mesh so that I can look at. Let's see, it's been a while since so I jumped over here and done it this way. There we go, turn. Uh, it's under. You see they're there. Let's go under object properties. Turn off edges only. And then I'm going to go into turn. I'll just 
just gonna. Hmm. Kind of slow to go in here and click all each one of these individually. So maybe just. to do is just go ahead and commit triangles like that not before duplicating the mesh though <laughs> just in case I need to go back let's duplicate that really to make lighting travel across this object evenly and smoothly in a game engine you want to kind of work those triangles but it's getting dense enough that it's not too big of a problem and I'm not really wanting to talk about turning triangles in this let's keep this video short that does bug me a little bit but <laughs> let's keep the video short object properties turn that off I'm not gonna look at that pretend it's not there Attach that cork there. And then let's go ahead and begin our unwrap. Unwrap UVW. I'm gonna re I'm gonna kind of select all geometry and planar map, clear my seams. <clears throat> and then let's just select what I know is gonna be broken. I don't know which one, I'd, maybe that's probably not the back of the mesh, so this is probably the back of the mesh. <clears throat> and that conveniently lines up on a natural seam for the object. There are other tools to select these, but I'm just selecting them by hand. <laughs> Uh, open UV editor window kind of already have my edges selected here so I'm going to right click and break then let's relax these tools relax they've fixed the align tool on newer uh, newer versions of 3ds max but man it just <sighs> used to have so many problems getting things to snap straight I want to take a look at my checkers Ooh, I'll do that Looking pretty good. Need to finish off that cork. Uh, really, I could have made that an instance with that material. <clears throat> so as I'm over here editing, let's see that change. Tools, relax, yes. And you notice it didn't relax because we have no seams. Don't 
have seams. So uh, which way was the back again? Here's the back. So I might put the seam for this on the same side. So like back here. Probably better to put the seam on the top above that cork can protect that curve. Break. Relax. Relax. Do some aligning. Man, I never know which one of these is a ring. Goodness. I'll snap those and align it. Probably gonna keep those slants. Maybe not. Thought I was protecting the checkers. ring and then I'm doing a line independently there we go fix those probably do the same here loop ring align independently oof yeah See what a relax boundary points fix would do for me. Not much, but See what I mean? Line, not doing it, what it should do. Yeah. Garbage. Just eyeball it. Kitty. Not right now, hold on. Boom. Trip me out how this how these look squashed. But the checkers are okay.
Easy enough. Let's pack this. Double check that the pixel density is correct. Let's zoom in here, line this up properly. Because we have enough room, I'll probably give this cork a little bit more to work with. Probably double it. Make it look real nice. Possibly scale these up just a little I, wanna, I don't want them to be so different that it's obvious that they're two different resolutions but it would be nice to have the tops of the barrel a little bit crisper Now, you can't do this for everything, and probably shouldn't do it too often, but I tend to start fudging UVs a little bit. I know this barrel's pretty much going to be wood. Uh, I mean, meaning I, what I mean is I know how I'm going to texture it. <laughs> trying to hit that scale tool. And so what I, I mean, what I might do is I might scale it vertically a little, just a bit, to make better use of this uh, texture space, give it a little bit more resolution. But not so much that anything that I put on here is... Oops. Not so much that any, any textures and scratches I put on here I can't really texture properly. Stretching UVs like that can make it difficult to put patterns and such. Wood grain maybe would, could look stretched if you're trying to run a procedural wood grain onto your UVs. Uh, stretching UVs like this could cause problems, but it was, it's so empty in this uh, UV space that I feel like it's almost, I don't know, wasteful not to stretch them a little bit. some of these pieces breathing room might do the same for the cork a little bit stretch it out <laughs> stretch it out and then I'll probably leave it at that so let's collapse that in don't need that instance anymore and I think I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing a test bake <coughs> Let's pick. Pick, pick, pick. Oh, what am I? Let's name this thing. And my voice is gone. <coughs> okay. Uh, probably set this padding all the way up. Use, use existing channel. Whoa. <coughs> Normal map. Uh, let's see what a 1024 looks like. Let's set the output for this. Textures. Barrel. Uh, normal. 24 bit Targa. Add 
lighting map 1024 name this set the output the barrel underscore AO add one more here wait add diffuse map 1024 barrel underscore color that's gonna be uh, how we pick how we pick out colors in, in uh, Photoshop or whatever painting package you're gonna be using uh, it'll help separate out the colors you'll see you'll see I think I have everything set up for the most part. Oh, for the most part. Let's go ahead and do our pick. Goodness, I thought I named this thing. <laughs> low poly. No, let's not call it low poly. Let's call it barrel. Yeah, let's just leave it at barrel. And then I'm going to pick, and I don't particularly care what all this high poly is called. Add that. Add. Let max seize a little bit. Let the cage explode. We're going to select it. Go to cage, shaded, reset, push. Now, you'll notice that when I push my cage amount out to capture all of that, that, I mean, really the cage for the cork is just out of control. And so what I could do is convert that cage to a vertex selection and I could reset just the cork itself and do a push a much smaller push on that and I want to make sure that this is uh, sometimes in cases like this I might might render two normal maps um, it just depends on how the normal map comes out sometimes when you push the cage really far like that to uh, capture details that your low poly really isn't I mean the low poly really isn't following the silhouette here and so it's probably gonna look a little bit whack in the end let's actually turn this up to two Turn up our mesh moves here. Oops. Okay. So as I push this cage, it might uh, the normal map colors might get a little whack if we push it too far out. And so it could be worth it sometimes to make two normal maps and just kind of composite those uh, areas in. Create a material here, turn bump on, set it to 100. Boom, normal bump. Boom, uh, bitmap. Textures. Yeah? Missing something. <laughs> Where did I save that normal map? Not 
not in the right place. We're going to cut, paste, and then resave in that location. Yes. Better. Good map. There it is. Open. And just so you can see what that color did, I'm going to load that bitmap. Textures, color, and then we'll display materials, make them set to realistic materials and viewport, and apply it to our barrel, and there you go. And it's looking like, honestly, those bands, I mean, they seem to have cast just fine. I was a little bit concerned about it, but. It's not too bad. Not too bad. You almost can't tell. <laughs> which one? Which one? Ah, this top one's bent a little bit, but JJ don't care. metal anyways they're real thin rings so they kind of get bent I'm wondering what that is is that seeing through no I don't think it's seeing through so bumping uh, the normal map up to actually I want to see if that's let me cut this cut yeah, it's still kind of in the normal map. So that could be fixed in post. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's doing that. It could be, it could be my UVs are a little turned. So you're seeing the stair stepping as it's trying to make these straight lines, which is annoying. It also has, could be resolved with a little bit of Resolution, so if I were to bump this up to a 2048, keep it clean, which is probably what I'm going to do for uh, just this being like a personal, you know, like a personal project, personal barrel, or for the sake of this tutorial, just make it look good. So unhide. Right, resolution. Jump down here. Normal map, 2048. It could also be resolved with the super sampler. It's probably the better way to go than just to turning everything up to the next map size. So let's talk about that. Um, if you go to options, I think uh, I didn't really have any missed rays, so I can turn that off. Looks like it, you know, I was getting a good normal map for the most part. Let's jump into setup here, which is just a shortcut to get you into the render settings uh, and uh, the renderer tab within the render settings or render setup dialog box. So I want to change a couple of things here. I think I'm going to change the uh, the filter to Catmull ROM and then I'm going to enable global super sampler and I'll probably just leave it at max 2.5 star and then uh, I'm going to render again and what the I mean it's just a higher quality sampling uh, the renderers just kind of taking more attention <laughs> uh, as it's <clears throat> as it's rendering so let's render that out Hopefully it didn't take too much longer. I'm gonna overwrite these files. Yeah, and that kind of helped a bit. Looks like it softened some of it. Let's take a look here. Should have updated. And it did help a little bit, kind of soften some of that jagginess a little but it's kind of not enough it's 
almost enough to make me want to go under the UVs and see if I couldn't turn that cap. Like five to, uh, wrong one. It'd be fun, uh, something fun to kind of experiment with. But really the point is here is that every little part of the stage matters. Uh, you see, even as I look at the wireframe and the UVs here, you can see how this, those wires are actually uh, turned a little bit. And so let's try to minimize that, see if it helps. So it's not five degrees. I mean, so I don't know how much that was that I really rotated that, but it was like something like 0 0.21. But I'm, I'm really just trying to get rid of the stair stepping in the wireframe. That's pretty darn clean. There's a little bit going on over here. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not bad. And this one's turned too, so let's turn that one, make it a little straighter. I mean, we're working with square pixels, and so when we're trying to capture curve details, I mean, just little things like this, I mean, it matters to have your UVs kind of lined up straight so that it's lining up with those pixels. Helps to have a bigger screen to do this. Point. Oof. There we go. This one's still a little crooked. <clears throat> I mean, we're talking like ugh. I get it right, but I'm using a Wacom pen, so every time I pull away from the Cintiq, it oof. There we go. I think I got it. Yeah, that was good. So those are straight. Let's see, <laughs> see if that helps. Back up to projection. I didn't change any geometry, so it should be okay. I don't need to redo all of my cage. If you go and you change geometry underneath the projection, you're gonna have to redo it. But in this case, I just adjusted the UVs. So let's go back in here. Um, this thing doesn't share the same UVs anymore, so that's garbage. And let's re-render this. Possible I made it worse. <laughs> Definitely different, but I don't know if it was necessarily better. Well, last resort, let's bump it up. We're under a 2048. Just give it more resolution. render out and if this looks good I'll kind of set it up for an AO render and then I'll uh, pause the pause the recording walk away let that AO render and then I'll come back <clears throat> yeah, 
Yeah, it's kind of the bummer of working with, uh, you know, pixels. <laughs> Get that stair stepping. It's just part of the part of part of the uh, the theory, I guess. Part of the tools. Part of what the what games are working with computers. But uh, it's looking pretty good. Let me render out my Amin occlusion. And I am gonna drop a skylight in here. I'm doing this old school. Light tracer, light, light tracer. Uh, I'll probably turn up my, uh, my rays and my samples here to four, maybe like 500 samples. And then I'm gonna drop a skylight in here. Lights, standard, skylight, boom. And then don't forget to change the color on that skylight to a full white. It's off blue by default. It's like a very off white, slight blue by default. <clears throat> and then double check our settings. I'll probably leave all these to render out of 2048 and I'm gonna render let this go override all of these and I'll see you guys in a moment <laughs> 